there will be a legal description of that property. And if you've had that chapter already, it would be the chapter that says lot four of Modulin Estates per plot book 41. Or if you want to get fancy, that would be, it would have the Northeast quadrant of the Northeast quadrant of the Northeast quadrant of section 26 of two range West, three tier North of principal Viridian number two, because I told you, we do not sell by street address. We sell by legal description. So the deed must have that legal description in it so that both parties understand what's going on and which property. There's going to be a section called exceptions. Now, here is where I was talking about those that run with the land like easements. Because remember, in the general warranty deed, we actually said that we were going to get rid of all of the uh, encumbrances, like the lien, the mortgage, the taxes. But there are some encumbrances we can't get rid of. Easements would be an example. So those would be listed. So understand what I'm saying. In that general warranty deed, we actually got said, I'm going to get rid of all of them. Well, I can't really do that. So in this section called exceptions is where we would actually list the ones I can't get rid of. Oh, there's an easement across the back of the property for the utilities. And there's an easement down the side that's a driveway for the other property. So those would be listed right in here because the general warranty deed said I'm getting rid of all of them. And then down here later in the deed, except these. All right. Then the seller will sign the property. It's called an acknowledgement. They will acknowledge it by getting it signed or they will sign it. And then that will be acknowledged by a or notarized by a notary public. All right. A notary public is an officer of the court. And there are two things the notary is trying to do when they notarize property. So let's talk about what a notary does. They actually serve no purpose for checking the legal validity of the contract. Understand what I said? What I'm saying is the notary doesn't read the contract and go, this is legal. I could actually write down on a piece of paper that pink elephants fly at midnight and get that notarized, all right? Because a notary only does two things. The first thing they do is they make sure that the person that signs it is actually who they say they are. If you've bought or sold a property recently, you know that when you went into the closing, the first thing they do is they ask for your ID or identification. That is so they can verify that the person that's going to sign this document or sign this deed or sign the uh, uh, note for the loan and the mortgage is who they say they are because they checked their ID and they looked at it and they went, yeah, that's Raymond Modulin. That's the first thing the notary does is they make sure that they are the person is who they say they are. The second thing is to make sure that the person signing it is doing it of their own volition. They are voluntarily signing it. This is why they want to see you sign it. They don't want you to bring it in. Oh, I signed this at home because they didn't know that you couldn't be pressured. So they're checking the validity of who the person is and that they are actually doing it on their own volition. Those are what the actual notary will do. So the seller or grantor will sign the document and he will do it in front of the notary who acknowledges it. And then the actual transfer of the document happens 
That didn't work out very well. When the deed is delivered and accepted. Boop. All right. Both of those conditions must be met. Delivered and accepted. So when the property is at a closing and the seller signs the deed and the closer acknowledges it and stamps it with their notary public and then hands it to the buyer and says, congratulations on your purchase of the property. And the buyer reaches up and takes hold of that deed and has been delivered boop, and accepted and title transfers. All right. That is the process by which we now convey real estate. There's a little section here about corporate deeds. If real estate is owned by a corporation, it must be signed by a person that has the power. And usually when this happens at a title company, the title company is going to request an authorization from the company saying that Raymond can sign in the name of Real University Inc. So that when it goes to sign and the school gets sold, the real estate gets sold because the building's owned by the school, I as the CEO can actually sign that and I will get a, uh, there will be a corporate deed from that, okay? Now here's all the deeds we talked about. There's a couple other deeds. There's one called the deed of trust. And if you look in your uh, book there, figure 6.3, you are going to see this. I'm going to redraw this picture for you. A corporate deed happens in a couple different ways. I guess I really need to learn how to use this correctly. I keep drawing a line when I'm trying to move it. So what you have is this person here who is the grantor. And they are going to deed it into a trust. Remember, I told you this was the third way to own property was this legal entity called a trust. Well, to do that, that also makes this person the trustor, right? Because they are the ones deeding the property into the trust. And what you get is this thing called a deed of trust. Sometimes I've seen the words deed in trust. That is the deed that would convey the property from the trustor to the trust. And of course, that trust is going to name the trustee. All right. So that is the deed of trust. Now, if that property or if that trust goes back to the original person. Let's say there's something that happens and the original trustor needs the property back. The trustor is going to go borrow money and he says, hey, bank, I want to borrow some money. And they go, okay, do you have any collateral? And he's going to say, well, there's a property in Indianapolis. And they're going to say, yeah, but it's owned by the trust. That's not yours. And he's going to go, oh, yeah, you're right. So he calls the trustee up and says, hey, man, I need you to deed me the property back so that I can use it as collateral for a loan. This would be called a reconveyance deed, right? What does the word re mean? Back. Conveyance. Transfer, going to transfer back to the original trustor in a reconveyance deed. <clears throat> if that trustee sells it to any other person, that trustee will sign what's called a trustee's deed. All right. A reconveyance deed is 
when it goes back to the original person that deeded it in, reconvey back to. If it goes to anybody else, that deed would be a trustee's deed, all right? And all I've done in this picture here is kind of read through what was in your book for you to look at. <clears throat> now, in some cases, the court gets involved, maybe like a divorce or a partnership breaking up to the point where the court, the judge decides that he's going to force the sale of the property. And if you think back to one of those that we told you uh, were the four grandsons and I said the judge told them, hey, you guys need to figure this out or I'm going to force the sale. So if it's conveyed pursuant to a court order, there is one way that you will be able to know that. All right. Remember, I told you in the deed itself, there is a generic statement that says for $10 and other good and valuable services. That statement was required to give some value so the consideration would be there to make this legal document fulfill all of the legal requirements for a contract. In a deed executed pursuant to a court order, the way that you would know this is that the actual full amount would be listed in that deed. All right. So that generic statement for $10 and other good, it won't say that. It'll say for $253,000 and other good and valuable services. The actual sales price will be right inside of the deed so that when it gets recorded, the judge can pull the legal record and look at it and go, okay, the property was sold for 253000 in this example. I now know how much I have to split out to the interested parties in this court case. That is the only way you know is that that full consideration price is stated instead of the generic price. So this next section here is math. Today is fun with math. Some states use a transfer tax or a tax stamp on the sale of real property. Florida, New York, Indiana does not. All right. So look at your state to figure out if there is a transfer tax. It can be paid by the seller or the buyer or split or negotiated within the contract. It is collected from the state or the city or the county, and they vary from different jurisdictions. Now, here's the problem. There are two ways to charge this tax. And it's important that you understand these two ways. And the math on this is different depending on how the question is asked. So it's very important that you understand this. Let's see if I can do this by typing. Make it real nice and neat. So one example would be uh, the tax is 50 cents per $1,000 of sales price. All right. That's the first method. So let's mark this as number one. That would be the first question. So let's do a math example to figure out how this is. So let's say the property sold for 235000 which is the number we just used. The first thing you need to understand, it's per thousand dollars. So you, how many thousand dollars are there in 235000 there are 235, and I'm going to use this word to maybe help you understand. Packets. Think of like a sugar packet. You know, you got one packet. There are 235 packets of $1,000. All 
Well, the tax on this is 50 cents for every thousand dollars. So you would take that 235 and multiply it 5.50 because it's 50 cents for every dollar or for every packet. And you get, what is that? 117. 50, right? Yeah, sorry, took a small break just to verify my math. So the sales tax on this property would be $117.50 paid by the seller or the buyer or however they negotiate. That's the first problem. Now, let's look at this problem and change the story. So here's the second question. It is 50 cents per $1,000 or any part thereof. All right, this is the second type of question they could ask. Now I will show you that this question here is how Florida does the taxes while this method here is how New York does their taxes. Or it's the other way around. Could be this may be Florida, all right? This version may be New York. The difference here is in this term or any part thereof. So let's do the same math, only different. Uh, did it, 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 can't do the same math. Should have thought about this. Let's do it this way. The house sells for 235.5. All right. 235.5. So what you get now is how many packets of a thousand are there? The answer is there are 235 and a half packets inside of this sales price. But the question says that it's 50 cents per thousand or any part of a thousand. So let me ask you a question. If I had to take six people to lunch and only four fit in my car, how many cars would I have to take? I would have to take two cars, right? Four in one car and two in the other. Why would I not take half a car? Because you can't have half a car. That is what this is saying. You cannot have a portion of a packet. So it's 50 cents per thousand or any portion of a thousand. So in essence, this number here actually becomes 236, all right? Because I can't have that half a portion. I have to count that half as a full portion. So now I've got the 50 cents and you will see that it, the tax becomes $118, all right? So it's virtually the same math but because this one says, or any part thereof, I cannot have that half a packet. I have to round it up. Let's get it over here in the middle of the screen to be the next one. And you'll notice that the price paid does not equal, even though it virtually is the same thing. So depending on what the question says, does it say 50 cents per thousand or does it say 50 cents per thousand or any part 
thereof. That's going to change the math. Now, I suggest you look at this and understand it. If you have questions, feel free to email me about this specific topic that deals with those taxes.